The next item of business is a debate on motion 3102 in the name of Rosanna Cunningham on delivering Scotland's food waste target. Can I invite members who wish to speak in the debate to press their request to speak buttons now? And in the open debate, it's four minute speeches uh, for members, but there is a little time in hand for interventions and time to be made up. I call on Rosanna Cunningham to speak to and move the motion. Cabinet Secretary, 10 minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I'm pleased to open this uh, debate, although it has been shrinking uh, as the uh, weeks went by, um, and I notice it has now gotten even shorter than it was originally uh, intended to be. Um, I'm hoping that we have a good debate, however, uh, on the problem of tackling food waste. Um, this government's aspiration is that Scotland become a good food nation, a country where people from every walk of life take pride and pleasure in and benefit from the food they produce, buy, serve and eat day by day. The Scottish Government is developing a holistic approach to food, how we minimise dietary related disease and raise healthy life expectancy, how we deliver fairer outcomes for Scotland's most deprived communities where disease, food poverty and hunger hit hardest, how we grow the food and drink industry and of course how we improve resource efficiency and crucially reduce the amount of food that is wasted. Zero Waste Scotland have estimated that in 2013 we wasted 1.35 million tonnes of food in Scotland. Now that waste arose in households, in manufacturing, hospitality, retail, education, health and social care and in wholesale operations. We also know there are significant losses of food on farms, although that is more difficult to measure. Presiding Officer, the Scottish Government has set a target to reduce that total food waste by 33% by 2025. We have aligned our ambition to that of the United Nations and our target will put us on track to deliver the UN Sustainable Development Goal of reducing food waste by 50% by 2030. We set a target because we wanted to focus action all along the supply chain from farm to plate. In identifying actions to reduce food waste, we will prioritise initiatives that also deliver outcomes on health on food poverty, actions that support our food and drink industry, and action that reduces emissions. Both myself and Fergus Ewing, who has responsibility for food and drink as part of his rural economy portfolio, will be working together very closely uh, on proposals for a Good Food Nation Bill, which the First Minister announced to Parliament in September. The worst thing that can happen with food waste is that it is sent to landfill, where it creates harmful methane gas. Our landfill ban means that no biodegradable municipal waste can be sent to landfill after 2020. Our waste regulations provide a statutory duty for councils to provide food waste collections in all but the most rural areas. And a similar requirement applies to all businesses that produce more than five kilograms of food per week. Once local authorities and businesses have collected food waste, they cannot send it for incineration or send it to landfill, it must be recycled. The Scottish Government has invested over £25 million in food waste collection since 2011, and 80% of all households now have access to a food waste service. We also intend to review the derogation for rural areas to ensure that we capture and deal with as much food waste as possible. So we are making good progress in our efforts to keep food waste out of landfill, the Committee on Climate Change recognises that Scotland's emissions from waste reduced by 77% from 1990 and we will continue those efforts as part of our climate change plan. Food waste that has been collected from households and businesses is able to be used in anaerobic digestion to generate heat and produce digestate. Our waste regulations have helped the anaerobic digestion sector to grow in Scotland and we will continue to support that sector. But the real prize is to avoid food ending up as waste in the first place. And that's what Scotland's new food waste target is intended to achieve. And I'm afraid to say that is a point that appears to have been missed by the Labour Party. We are not starting from scratch. Between 2009 and 2014, the amount of food we wasted at home fell by 5.7%, saving households some £92 million. I'd like to outline some of the initiatives that have helped us deliver reductions uh, thus far and on which we can build in meeting the new ambitious target. For consumers, the Love Food Hate Waste,
campaign provides simple solutions to help people reduce waste and save money at home, planning meals, using up leftovers, portioning, correct storage of food to keep food fresher for longer, freezing and understanding date labels. And of course, at this time of the year, that's probably one of the most germane things for us to be discussing. There is a good-to-go doggy bag scheme now covering 100 restaurants with the aim of reducing food waste and bringing about a shift in our culture with regards to food waste. During the pilot phase of good-to-go, a 40% reduction was reported in the waste from restaurants participating in the pilot. We fund the Courtauld Commitment, the voluntary scheme supported by administrations across the UK, which aims to reduce food waste by 20% between 2009 and 2025. Our flagship Resource Efficient Scotland service provides free food and drink waste audits to help businesses cut their waste costs and reduce their carbon footprint. And RES are working with NHS Tayside to trial a new catering software system with the potential to improve efficiency and lower costs. Zero Waste Scotland is working with 10 SME bakeries and five SME breweries to offer in-depth food waste support and create examples of best practice and guidance for the bakery sector. And this morning, actually, I, I visited the Breadwinner Bakery in South Gyle in Edinburgh, which is a great example of a family food business thinking hard about avoiding food waste. Around 20% of the bread that would otherwise be wasted in production is given to charity. A further 20% goes to a bio company that makes animal feed. And around 50% is donated to a local organic pig farm. And I'm sure that members will be interested in the collaboration taking place between Glasgow Chamber of Commerce, Glasgow City Council, Scottish Enterprise and Zero Waste Scotland. That project is piloting an approach to transforming the 200,000 uh, slices of bread wasted every single day in Glasgow uh, into beer as a way to minimise resources used in the brewing process and reduce food waste. Far be it for me to say that there are members in this chamber who probably think that's a wonderful uh, development. These are just a handful of the initiatives uh, that are happening across uh, Scotland. And I know that members across the chamber will have compelling examples to share of initiatives in their own constituencies, and we want to see good practice extended. But make no mistake, our ambition is significant. We believe that our target is one of the most ambitious of its kind in Europe and beyond. And in due course, we will consult on whether it should be a voluntary or statutory target. So we will need to up our game. We need to learn from our experience thus far and identify the tools that will help us to reduce the food that we waste by 33%. I want to work with all stakeholders all along the supply chain, from farm to plate, to identify the best way to deliver our ambition on food waste in parallel with our ambitions for a good food nation. And last week, Zero Waste Scotland organised the first of a number of cross-sectoral workshops to generate ideas and identify opportunities for sectors to work together to reduce the waste incurred along the supply chain. We do want to reduce the amount of food that is lost before it ever leaves the farm. We want to help manufacturers avoid the costs of wasted food products. We want to help retailers meet customer demand while minimising the generation of surplus food. Where surplus food arises, we want it to be redirected to those who need it. When surplus food has no other use for humans, it can have a role in feeding animals. And when all other options have been exhausted, it can be captured by our statutory food waste collections and used to generate energy through anaerobic digestion. Presiding officer, reducing food waste is a core element of Scotland's circular economy strategy, making things last. The work that, Scotland, that Zero Waste Scotland, Scottish Enterprise and SEPA have done in partnership with organisations across all of our constituencies to create a more circular economy in Scotland has been recognised by the Circulars, the awards programme run by the World Economic Forum in Davos. Scotland has been shortlisted as a finalist for those awards alongside entries from China, Canada, the Netherlands and South Africa. So I think we can all take pride in Scotland being recognised on the international stage uh, in this way. Presiding officer, next year uh, I intend to consult on the package of measures uh, that we will need to put in place to deliver our ambitious target. Ahead of that, I welcome all suggestions and ideas from across the chamber on action to reduce the food that we waste. But I must caution members, this debate is about preventing waste. It is not just about recycling, because the recycling part of that is not actually included in this 33% target. And I fear that Labour has perhaps misunderstood uh, what this is about. 
Reducing food waste is an environmental, moral and economic imperative, and I move the motion to the Chamber. Thank you very much, Cabinet Secretary. I now call on Peter Chapman to speak to move Amendment 3102.1. Mr Chapman, seven minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I refer members to my register of interests as a farmer. I am pleased to see the Scottish Government bringing forward such an important motion today. Food waste is a huge problem. Across the world, it is estimated that one third of all food produced is wasted or spoiled. And when millions are starving, this is an international scandal. Food is wasted at every stage of production, in the fields, in store, at processors, by the retailers, and in the home. It is a huge waste of energy, fertilizer and water, adding to climate change as it decomposes and emits greenhouse gases. Here in Scotland, it affects household income as hundreds of pounds worth of food is literally thrown away every year by the average family. Now, in our house, if food looks okay and smells okay, then it probably is okay, and I will gladly eat it. Well done, Peter. That has been my guide for years, and just look at what a fine figure of a man I am. <laughs> that said, I am not <laughs> suggesting we should totally ignore things like best before and sell by dates. I haven't got time, sorry. I, I would love to, but I haven't time. But I think, I do think a little common sense would help us to stop good food being thrown in the bin. I am sure the whole chamber will agree with me when I say that tackling excess waste must be something that we seek to deliver across party lines. Nevertheless, as a strong opposition, we cannot and will not give this SNP government a free pass. While I respect that the minister has spoken passionately about the importance of reducing food waste, I am concerned that not enough work on the ground is being done to deliver on these ambitious targets. Indeed, this government will need to look closely at how it will be able to support more remote local authorities, such as the Highlands, in delivering food waste processing services while adhering to the key principles of waste management. And I believe that in the most remote communities, it will be dealing with waste product as close to the point of production as possible that will pose the greatest challenge. Looking at the sheer volume of food waste, we see the scale of the challenge. The recent report, How Much Food Waste Is There in Scotland, was published just last month and gives us a stark insight into the task the government must take on. 600,000 tonnes of waste from households, 740,000 tonnes from commercial and industrial premises, 510,000 from food and drink manufacturing and another 200,000 tonnes from other sources adds up to a colossal 2 million tonnes annually. And this is a staggering amount, which is why I welcome the government's ambition. However, it is clear that ambition does not necessarily equal successful delivery. To deliver in five years, as the SNP plan to do, no food waste going to landfill seems extremely ambitious. I wonder if it's realistic. One has to wonder, did the year 2021 come out of thin air, or did it come from a reasoned plan with practical means of delivery. Considering that there are parts of the country that do not even carry out food waste recycling yet, it would be remiss of me if I did not remark on the Minister's bravery for committing to this target. There will be ways to improve food waste figures, there's no doubt about it. For starters, there is certainly more that could be done at the beginning of the food production chain. More work must be done to utilize imperfect but very edible fruit and vegetables. Now, growing food isn't a perfect science, and the most talented farmer will always have fruit and vegetables which aren't perfect in every way. We need to find a way to get more of these less than perfect vegetables and fruits into the consumer's food trolley. Now, I speak from experience when I say that food intended for folk can and is consumed, consumed by livestock, and usually with a lot less griping about how it looks. It is, however, an expensive second best option for the grower. You know, if a farmer can sell a ton of tatties for 200 pounds to a retailer, that same ton of product, if it doesn't meet specifications, is worth something on the reason of 15 pounds 
15 pounds for stock feed. The, res the result of this difference is that whole fields of vegetables can be wasted because the price offer is less than the cost of picking it. That said, current proposals under consideration by the UK government where retailers would buy a full crop and then make best use of the produce would have multiple benefits. Not only would it reduce the potential for food waste, it would also offer farmers far greater certainty in their incomes. My concern is that this sensible step may be too difficult to implement on the ground. But of course, this debate is not just about the waste we produce. We need to get smarter when it comes to processing the waste that we do create. We need a long-term sustainable way to manage the treatment of food waste for which we will need to see political leadership from the SNP. This government will need to look at all the options, whether that's AD plants, feeding more to livestock, composting, or using food waste for heat. We also need a government here in Scotland that recognises the challenge faced by local authorities that are already tied into waste management contracts, sometimes for up to 25 years. And certainly that more needs to be done to educate and prevent wood, food waste in households from happening in the first place. That will require more education about buying only what you need, which would also help hardworking families make ends meet. I have spoken about how farmers and indeed everyone can contribute to reducing food waste. And I am certain my colleagues and I will always look at practical, deliverable proposals to reducing that waste. This is a fight that we need to tackle for the sake of our planet. Presiding officer, I move the amendment in my name. Thank you, Thank you very much, Mr Chapman. I now call Claudia Beamish to speak to move the, um, amendment 3102.2. Five minutes, please, Ms Beamish. Thank you, presiding officer. And I do indeed move the amendment in my name. And uh, Scottish Labour is positive today about supporting the Scottish uh, government motion and the Tory um, amendment as well. Um, just for clarity, um, as the Cabinet Secretary um, put a question mark over our amendment, I would just like to um, explain before I go into my other remarks that um, we are supportive of um, Scottish Government looking to cut food waste by one third by 2025 and it is also the opinion of Scottish Labour that that food waste that uh, is not possible to cut should not be going to landfill and that's why we have put our proposal in our amendment as well um, as, a, as a measure, an, an interim measure to make sure that um, uh, that food waste is not going to landfill and that covers the range of other um, possibilities that could happen. So, yes. Can I just finish the point and say what the, what the amendment um, involves then? Um, that uh, we're asking that the Scottish Government consider um, our proposed target of recycling 100% of food waste by 2020, recycling being a quite broad definition. I'm sure that Maurice Golden will have something to say about that. Yes, Maurice Golden, please. I, I think just for the benefit of the Chamber, when you're speaking about uh, uh, recycling of food waste, just for clarity, can you confirm that in that broadest sense of the term, you're meaning anything including composting, uh, IV in-vessel composting, AD within that wider term. So anything other than disposal or prevention is, is your amendment. Claudia Beamish. Uh, yes, thank you. I thank the member for that and I'm happy to clarify that that is indeed our position. So I hope that um, clarifies uh, the point for the, <laughs> for the Cabinet Secretary. You will, will, get, your time, will, you will get your time back, Ms Beamish. I, I, Cabinet I Secretary. It's important. <laughs> I'm just curious to know what advice uh, um, was taken um, when Labour drafted this amendment because I have direct advice from Zero Waste Scotland that the uh, proposal uh, by Labour is unachievable. Claudia Beamish. Right, uh, it's, it, it's that I have, I have looked with colleagues at the possibilities and the range of, of different options and therefore I've said that it's a proposed target and that of course would be open to uh, discussion. Uh, so um, that's where we are. So I'll, I'll proceed to make my other comments. Uh, we do need a new approach to food and food waste in Scotland. And uh, as I say, I support the Scottish Government's motion today. And 
We certainly support the statement that reducing food waste uh, is a moral, environmental and economic imperative for everyone in Scotland. And food is, of course, um, a fundamental human necessity, but it's also much more than that. It's an intrinsic part of our culture, society and well-being. And food poverty is indeed our shame here in Scotland and anywhere else in the world where it happens. And at home here, it is a rising and un unacceptable one. And in 2014-15, the Trussell Trust provided uh, 117,689 people in Scotland with emergency food aid. And the Chamber will know this is only a small snapshot of food insecurity. When confronted with these realities, the cr crime, in quote, of food wastage becomes even more apparent. And the Scottish Government is right to have ambitious targets for food and drink exports, but I would like the Cabinet Secretary in her closing remarks to clarify a concern that Scottish Labour has about the draft budget uh, for Zero Waste Scotland being cut by 2.9 uh, million, and I wonder how the Cabinet Secretary can square this with the challenges for food waste reduction. More must be done to tackle this uneconomical, unjust and unenvironmental practice of food wastage. It will also take behaviour change, and households must be provided with proper information on recycling in the area, which is a challenge uh, for not just Scottish Government, but local authorities as well. And there are many individual ways that people can make an impact, which have been highlighted by um, the Cabinet Secretary uh, already. Uh, I would just uh, raise a, a couple of other ones. I'm not sure I would go past the sell-by date myself, although my partner and I always have that debate. But proper understanding of how to store and freeze food types is also important. And uh, beyond that, uh, all these are steps towards a circular economy for Scotland, and thus uh, we are, as I say, supporting the Tory amendment today. To give it economic context, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation has identified the circular economy making a global saving of £1.3 trillion a year. In, in Scotland, avoidable food and drink waste costs households £1.1 As one of the sponsors of the annual success, which is the Holyrood Apple Day, I want to use fruit as a proxy for other forms of creativity with surplus fresh supplies. In my own region of um, South Scotland, the Clyde Valley Orchards Cooperative has been formed and involves members of the community and orchard growers in making apple juice from regenerated orchards rather than leaving the apples and trees on the trees to rot. Food can also inspire social benefits. In Edinburgh, the social enterprise Fruitful Woods involves people experiencing mental illness in outdoor orchard activity, including pressing apples. And this initiative is funded by products made from the surplus apples. Can I ask and to wind up? I've given you yes, an demonstrates minute. a huge impact that can be lost if fruit was left on, in the ground. So I'd ask the Cabinet Secretary to consider further support for community and cooperative activity on food waste. And that's where I will end. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Gillian Martin to be followed by Edward Mountain. Miss Martin, please, four minutes. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to inform the Chamber, first of all, that I am the Parliamentary Liaison Officer to the Cabinet Secretary for Environment, Climate Change and Land Reform, as I believe we have to do on these occasions. As the MSP for Aberdeenshire East, which includes the town of New Deer, I am delighted to speak in a debate on food waste, as New Deer is a major Scottish hub for the recycling of food waste. In fact, Canaan Recycling handles 50% of Scotland's food waste. That's 50,000 tonnes of food waste per annum, of which 30,000 tonnes is collected from restaurants and other food outlets. Keenan's turns the vast proportion of the food waste tonnage that they receive into BSI-approved agricultural compost. This compost, aside from reusing our food waste instead of sending it to landfill, also fulfils a dual environmental protection purpose by replacing chemical fertilisers and maintaining the fertility of farmland soil that's used to grow our food. The company also converts food waste into clean biofuel for anaerobic digestion plants which produce electricity or gas to the public grid and has also acquired a site at Linwood in my friend Tom Arthur's constituency in Renfrewshire South. 
um, with plans to mirror that state-of-the-art facility down there as well. And uh, th that will more than double the production capacity for biofuel. A Scottish Government initiative launched in January stipulated that any food outlet producing more than five kilos of food waste per week must segregate it from other waste and have it collected. This improved in the previous stipulation of a threshold of 50 kilos. At a visit to Keenan's Recycling Centre earlier this year, I spoke to the Managing Director, Grant Keenan, who informed me that the amount of food waste being recycled from small food outlets, bringing them into line with the practices of larger ones, and further, improving the, that further improves the level of food waste and the quality of food waste that's recycled into these products. But I also want to highlight the, the good work of Zero Waste Scotland in the area of food waste education. Of course, the number one priority for all waste management is to completely eliminate waste in the first place. And the Cabinet Secretary also mentioned the Good to Go trial that encouraged restaurants to offer uh, doggy bags to take home uh, leftovers when you haven't been eating them in, uh, in the restaurant. It's been highly successful and that may change our culture in asking to take leftovers home, which for some reason we've been a wee bit reluctant to do in the past. And whilst I'm talking about culture changes, in, in my home, having the food bin and waste, food waste collection service in my local authority, the, those services that they provide has increased my family's awareness of the amount of food waste we generate. Aberdeenshire Council has taken a number of measures to reduce food waste and improve our behaviours around food buying and storage, segregation and recycling. It might have taken this generation and my generation a wee while to get used to segregating and recycling, but it's already second nature to my children, who do it without thinking, both at home and at school and college. Um, by the education around minimising food waste, we'll make those good habits second nature too. These behaviours encouraged at national and local government level and hugely assisted by programmes like Zero Waste Scotland promote are the reason why Scotland really does have a very good chance of meeting our food waste reduction targets by 2025. And with households, businesses and the public sector carefully segregating what we still do produce, we can ensure that as much of our food waste ends up being useful rather than being sent as it has been historically to landfill. Thank you very much. I call Edwin Mountain to be followed by Angus Macdonald. Mr Mountain, please. Pre Presiding officer, thank you very much. There seems to be a fashion at the moment for making declarations. I am not going to make a declaration that I'm a farmer because I don't farm rubbish and nor am I a rubbish farmer. What I would like to do though <laughs> is take this to a much more local level in the Highlands and talk about why the Highland is different to the most of Scotland. Not just because the Highlands are the best place to live and work, but we deal with waste in a completely different way. Now, those of you that have listened to that statement will see it is true in all but one respect. The respect that it's not true is that there are 27,000 houses in Inverness that deal with food waste in the same way that the rest of Scotland does. That is with curbside collections. It is estimated these collections collect about 100, sorry, 1,700 tonnes of waste per annum. So what really happens to the rest of the food waste in the Highlands? I'm not sure that my investigations have proved that anyone can really tell you. Perhaps we should look, therefore, at the size of the problem. Figures suggest that in each household in the Highland generates about 150 kilograms of food waste a year. So if you scale that up to the Highlands as a whole, there'd be some 16 to 17 thousands of tonnes of waste annually. And just to complete the, ma complete the mass of you that need, that need it done, we are only therefore capturing 10% of the food waste that is produced in the Highland. There is another 90% to be collected. Now, anecdotal evidence would suggest that food waste is com composted, but the Highland Council's calculations suggest that between th 2001 and 2010, 41,236 compost bins have been distributed, but demand peaked in 2006 and 2007 and there has been a rapid decline since. So even if you could assume that all the issues that had been supplied by the Highland Council were still being used, which would in fact be false, we have a long way to go if we are to achieve a zero biodegradable food waste to landfill by the end of 2020. 
So it has to be questioned how this government thinks it would be possible to achieve the very laudable target that they've set if they specifically ignore the highlands or do not treat them differently. And it would be too easy to say that we are the same as the central belt with large urban conurbations because dealing with waste collection in those areas is simple. Many MSPs in this chamber know that it's very easy to move around in these conurbations on foot from one side to the other and by doing so by a brisk walk. For those of us that live in the highlands, it takes hours to move from one side to the other and that's in, in, in an insured car. This highlights the issues. And if we look at the cost per household of collecting waste, excluding sterling in 2014-15, the Highlands have the highest collection cost for collecting waste, which is nearly 40% higher than the national average. So that is an extremely high uh, cost. Now, when I contacted the Highland Council earlier this week to ask out how they were going to deal with these costs, they had no idea. In fact, they hadn't even commissioned a waste plan for the Highland. It appears that the problem is too big and that the DIY solutions that have been suggested and has been used and funded in the past were only scratching the surface and would not be fit for the future. So what is the solution? I have to look to the government for the answer. It's their target. They must have a solution. Or is this just a soundbite policy based on unachievable targets? I hope this afternoon that I would see in the budget some money set aside for this, and I would take an intervention now if anyone saw it, but I did not. So I have real concerns, and as my time is up, presiding officer, I would like to say in summary to the Cabinet Secretary, you must look at the Highlands differently, and you must help us achieve that target if it's to be a real target rather than a soundbite one. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mountain. Call Angus Macdonald to be followed by Elaine Smith. Mr. Macdonald, please. Thank you, President Officer. I'm pleased to have the opportunity to speak in this debate this afternoon, um, which, while it's a topic that seems minor to most people out there in the context of day-to-day -to -day life, it's one that quickly adds up throughout the year. In one year, as we've heard from the Cabinet Secretary, it's estimated Scotland will throw away 1.35 million tonnes of food and drink, which in turn cost the public over £1 billion or £460 per household in unnecessary purchases. Considering the number of people that experience food insecurity daily here in Scotland, these statistics are simply unacceptable. Clearly, the Scottish Government acknowledges this problem and seeks to address the issue with one of the most ambitious targets of its kind, both in Europe and globally, seeking to cut food waste by a third by 2025. And this new goal would make Scotland a global fr front runner in food waste reduction and save at least £500 million. Now, we will, of course, have to tackle this problem from a variety of angles, and we can take a lead from several, several countries which have also taken up this fight, and we shouldn't hesitate to look to them for inspiration. France, for example, has introduced a law that forbids food waste by supermarkets and compels them to donate unused food to charities and food banks instead of throwing it away. In the UK, as we know, supermarkets donate food on a voluntary basis, and they have to be commended on that. However, there's always room for improvement. Other options have been explored within Scotland as well. For instance, um, as the Cabinet Secretary and Gillian Martin have already mentioned, uh, the Good To Go doggy bag programme piloted at 15 uh, restaurants across Scotland yielded significant results by allowing customers to bring their unfinished meals home in compostable boxes. Such a small step had huge results. An average waste reduction of 42% per restaurant with about 92% of surveyed customers saying they finished the meal they took home. This could save the equivalent of 800,000 full meals from being thrown out each year. President officer, reducing food waste would not just address food insecurity in Scotland, but it would also allow us to make positive environmental changes too. Decomposing food in landfills uh, releases methane, as we know, um, a greenhouse gas which, uh, as we also know, significantly con contributes to global warming even more so than carbon dioxide does. So the 2020 landfill ruling is very welcome indeed. Um, countries like France, uh, again, are making strides to reduce food waste, uh, and other countries like Sweden and Norway have embraced ways of efficiently incinerating waste to use as fuel for energy production. And the household food waste from my local authority area is used for that purpose at an incinerator in Cumbernauld. So progress is being made. 
Both of these options implemented together could make significant contributions to minimising Scotland's carbon footprint. My local authority, Falkirk Council, has been at the forefront of the food waste strategy since its inception, achieving some very positive results. They made it a priority to find out what they can do better, and they pushed themselves to meet their own ambitious aims. As one of the highest performing council areas, their work in reducing food waste to landfill is an example of what opportunities lie ahead. However, this can only be done by communities, local authorities and government working together for the benefit of the environment. And we look forward to the release of uh, RPP3 or the Climate Change Plan next month, which uh, would hopefully help to address the issue ensuring a landfill ban is uh, the ultimate goal. The circular economy strategy has massive potential to create jobs and to help boost the economy, but this needs to be taken on board by all of us. We all have a responsibility to look after the environment and ensure that we have a sustainable outlook on what the future holds as a zero waste country. Needless to say that delivering zero waste to landfill is extremely challenging, but with the opportunities within these strategies, working together with our communities will ensure that Scotland can deliver and achieve our targets. In short, President Officer, we all must play our part in reducing food waste by 33% by 2025. But if local and national government, along with manufacturers and retailers, show, lead show leadership, then we will reach our goal and we will all collectively up our game. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Mr Macdonald. I call Elaine Smith, to be followed by Mark Ruskell. Ms Smith, please. Thank you, President Officer. It is actually shocking that we have to discuss the problems of food waste at all, given that one in nine of the world's population are starving and increasing numbers of our own citizens are having to turn to food banks, as well as homeless people depending on soup kitchens week in, week out. And it's also clear that the interests of big business and retail do not often reflect those of the environment or the communities that we live in. Granted, some companies do a bit to try and help the third sector to address food poverty, and I will come to that later, but too many are simply concerned with their own profit margins. And if supermarkets and other businesses are not willing to reform voluntarily, then there may, of course, be a case for things such as fines that happen in France, as I mentioned by Angus MacDonald. But the problem, of course, goes beyond that. As we know, 44% of food waste comes from households, and that means habits have to change, even though we have seen uh, some advances in the, the habits and the figures. And I have to put my hands up to being guilty in the past of not paying enough attention to food waste. However, I have become increasingly aware of the importance of reusing in terms of leftovers, reducing in terms of purchasing less and recycling the unavoidable waste. And along with education campaigns, encouraging use of food waste bins and a weekly collection of them, as happens in North Lanarkshire, is a big factor in reducing avoidable uh, household food waste and, as was mentioned previously, in educating families about how much food they are wasting. There are good efforts by councils and Parliament might want to congratulate North Lanarkshire Council, who were crowned Best UK Performer in the Environmental Health category at the Association for Public Service Excellent Awards for the second year in a row. But I have to say the good work of councils won't be helped by squeezing council budgets, undervaluing refuse workers and limiting their hours. And whilst the government's greener campaign has helped, I think there's no doubt that more effort is needed across government to achieve transformational change in our approach to food and waste. Turning to community involvement, there are many examples of good practice. We've certainly heard some of those in the chamber this afternoon. And in the central Scotland area, Lanarkshire Community Food and Health Partnership run and supply 40 community food co-ops. Based in Bergedi, they've been helping local people for 22 years and they're collaborating in the Fair Share project. And what they do is, alongside selling high quality fresh produce at a low price and running cookery and nutrition sessions, they also get to the issues at the heart of food waste and bringing a community benefit with that. And uh, here in Edinburgh, initiatives like Oxgang's Neighbourhood Centre, who receive food from Marks and Spencers to use at their community cafe, is a good example. And they get assistance by using Neighbourly, a social platform which connects local projects with people and organisations that want to help. And of course, the co-op have always led the way with fair trade products, but they also, and, and they also take part in fair share schemes and they don't send their waste to landfill. 
Last year alone, they redistributed 30 tonnes 30 tons of food, which is around 300,000 meals. And Peter Chapman might be interested in the fact that they sell so-called ugly fruit and veg in their stores. Community organisations, like those I've mentioned, believe there's no excuse for food waste. And uh, these kind of initiatives can help make Scotland a zero waste nation and take some power back from the dominance of big business. President Officer, as a socialist, food justice is something I feel strongly about. And the importance of this is summed up very well by Dave Watson from Unison, who said that in addition to uh, the union's interest in staffing issues, and I quote, we also have a wider concern to ensure that food policy contributes to a more equal society that protects our environment. I, I totally agree with that, and the importance of this issue for Parliament, people and the planet cannot be underestimated. Thank you. <clears throat> Mark Ruskell, followed by Liam McCarthy. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and can I thank the Government for bringing forward this short debate this afternoon. I very much hope that this is just the start of the conversation on our food culture in this session of Parliament. And our approach to the economy, health, our local and global environment, social justice and, and identity are all wrapped up in food. The linkages between these themes will provide much of the backdrop to the debates to come on the Good Food Nation and Circular Economy Bills. And I would urge the Scottish Government to be bold in joining up action across agendas to make real progress. Now, the setting of a food waste target earlier this year is a very welcome first step, framed around the need to cut greenhouse gas emissions, improve productivity in the food and drink sector, and deliver financial savings to households and businesses. And I welcome uh, the consultation on the statutory target and the roadmap that's to follow. But can I emphasise, though, I think as, as Elaine Smith has just done, that this is also a social justice issue. And it is a fact that over 130,000 people a year are visiting Trussell Trust food banks in Scotland, while we throw away nearly one and a half million tonnes of food. And for example, um, there's enough fruit being thrown away each year in Scotland to supply the equivalent of an apple for every child and teacher in Scotland every day for 18 months. Shocking waste of food. But you contrast that with a recent survey that showed that only 6% of us felt any shame in actually wasting food. So I would urge the government to build on the moral imperative that is mentioned in the motion and ensure that the social justice implications of food waste form a strong part of its educational work. Now, while there's so far been a strong emphasis on household food waste, the majority of waste occurs before it even reaches homes or in some cases before it even reaches the farm gate. So if the government's target is to be met, then we need a better understanding of the whole supply chain and how waste can be reduced. Manufacturing is responsible for nearly half a million tonnes of food waste, and there's little evidence so far of how government is engaging in the entire supply chain, especially at the field end. Now there is, as the Minister's already mentioned, the voluntary courthold commitment for the UK grocery sector aimed at reducing waste, but the modest targets of reducing pro product and packaging waste in the early phases of that commitment, I believe, fall short of this government's aspirations. And indeed, we've yet to see the results of those early phases being published. Now, separately, the Groceries Code lays out guidelines for the relationship between retailers and producers in the UK, but is weak on food waste because it only covers the waste that retailers create when food goes beyond its sell-by date. The Groceries Code adjudicator who oversee enforcement is currently under review, and it's vital that a strong message goes out from this Parliament that the role of the GCA should continue and be strengthened, particularly in relation to waste. Now, it's critical, for example, that we see a supply chain that delivers a fair livelihood for our growers and producers. And I'm sure many members have met producers who've had to plough in fields of perfectly edible vegetables simply because of supermarkets' failure to adequately market class two produce. The root cause of this problem is an imbalance in our food system where supermarket buyers are able to undermine good practice. And forecasting is one of the main areas of waste where orders placed a year in advance can be subject to last minute variations. And although the code covers good practice on forecasting, it offers plenty of wriggle room for supermarkets. So the code should be tightened to require retailers to find outlets for unwanted produce supplied as a result of forecast over forecasting. And this could be, for example, via processing or sale to consumers at a lower cost. 
In the longer term, stable contracts based on purchasing a whole field of produce need to be reflected in the code, alongside ending the sale and return practices which are leading to huge waste, particularly in the bakery sector at the moment. Finally, uh, presiding officer, um, can I uh, welcome this debate uh, today? I think there are many initiatives in Scotland that cut across education, environment, business, health and local government that can enable us to take a joined up picture to tackle uh, these crises and create a vibrant food culture that we need to nurture in Scotland. And I look forward to these approaches being at the heart of the forthcoming Good Food Nation Bill. <coughs> Liam MacArthur, followed by Richard Lockhead. Hey, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, given my performance at First Minister's questions earlier, maybe start with a declaration of interest as somebody guilty of creating um, food waste in my time. And I, I take Mark Rusk Ruskell's uh, preemptive rebuke in the spirit in which it was uh, intended. Uh, can I too welcome this debate, support the, the motion put forward by Rosanna Cunningham, and, and, and indeed I think much, if not all, of what she had to say in her remarks. Yeah, equally, I, I support uh, Peter Chapman's uh, amendment, which I think uh, lays particular emphasis in, uh, in relation to the circular economy, which I think is helpful. Uh, much as I would like to support Claudia Beamish's um, uh, amendment, uh, given her track record in this and related areas, uh, and, and much as I believe the government needs to be uh, aspirational and ambitious in, in this area for all the reasons that other members have suggested, I think we also need to be realistic. And I think in the brief time available to me, let me set out why uh, one of the reasons why I don't think uh, what is suggested in that amendment is achievable. In Orkney, there is a real appetite um, to recycle, to improve our environmental performance, indeed often a frustration uh, that people find that they can't do uh, more. Uh, in an island, uh, I think the sustainable use of resources uh, and recycling are self-evidently the right thing uh, to be doing. But Orkney, as uh, I think the Cabinet Secretary alluded to in her remarks, is currently exempt under the uh, food waste regulations on the basis of uh, rurality. There is no plant. Solid waste in the main is sent uh, north to, uh, to Shetland, to the, uh, to the heat and power uh, generation up there. Um, the costs involved in, in, uh, in, in collection uh, in Orkney, um, I think, are prohibitively high at this stage. But nobody locally is happily, happy with that state affairs. Uh, and there is good work going on locally to try and find a solution. The local council is uh, working with SSE, Scottish Water, uh, some of the waste producers in uh, the agriculture, like aquaculture, food and drinks uh, uh, sectors, and indeed in shipping, to come up with an innovative solution that not only deals with the food waste problem, but actually comes up with an, a, a, a solution in terms of uh, heat and power, uh, benefiting not just local uh, housing in the area, but public buildings, and providing a benefit to commercial premises as well. As one might imagine, and uh, on the back of the budget, budget statement we've just heard, the Cabinet Secretary will not be surprised to hear that this comes at a cost. Uh, speaking to uh, local offic officials in Orkney Islands Council, they've estimated the costs at around 40 to 45 uh, million pounds for the upfront uh, capital. Uh, providing a, a return in terms of uh, reduced running costs of one to one and a half million pounds a year. Uh, this is clearly not something that Orkney Islands Council alone can shoulder, uh, and I think they quite understandably are looking uh, for match support from the Scottish Government in due course. Uh, but this is also a project that will take time to deliver. Um, uh, the official I spoke to suggested if we started today, we are still four to five years away uh, from a key in the door. So again, I think back to my point and my earlier point uh, about the Labour amendment, uh, I think in a practical sense, the deliverability of, of what Claudia Beamish is talking about it, it is simply not there. Now, as I say, I think the government is right to be uh, ambitious. Uh, I, I think the reasons for that have been well articulated uh, by others, uh, but it must will the me means as well as the end. Uh, I can assure uh, Rosanna Cunningham that Orkney stands ready to play uh, our part uh, in creating a good food nation and driving down. Uh, food waste, but I hope the Cabinet Secretary will commit uh, to the capital and revenue support that will allow them to do so. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Richard Lockhead, followed by Finlay Carson. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and <clears throat> I'm really pleased to have the opportunity to make a, a brief contribution to this debate, and we should celebrate the fact that Parliament is having a dedicated debate on the subject of food waste, which I think is a very good illustration of how the agenda has changed over recent years, and I congratulate Rosanna Cunningham, the Cabinet Secretary, in bringing forward uh, this debate. 
because it was five years ago or certainly ten years ago, it's very unlikely that we would have all recognised food waste as such a subject that it would deserve its own dedicated debate uh, in the Parliament. So things are certainly going in the right direction. And I clearly very much support the Scottish Government's target to reduce food waste by a third by 2025. And there's no doubt that throughout this Parliament, food is going to be much higher up the agenda. Food in all its forms in terms of its impact on our health and well-being, on our economy, especially with some of the economic trends that are happening just now, uh, and of course on our environment and indeed on poverty uh, as well. So the Good Food Nation Bill, which is promised in the SNP's manifesto, is going to be a golden opportunity to put in place some radical, innovative and forward-thinking measures to take forward all of these agendas, which future generations of Scots will look back in many years and thank us for putting in place. And if we look at how behaviours change in society over recent years, thanks to the advent of this Parliament, we have good examples to learn from. The plastic bag levy, for instance, was put in place and helped change behaviour. And today we're discussing how we now have 75% of households in Scotland with a food recycling service. And that's been achieved just in a few short years. And like many other people in this chamber, I've got my food caddy at home. And now I just take it for granted and I can't imagine living without it. And other, the other recycling bins I have at home in Murray. But I'm still appalled by how often I have to empty the food caddy. And clearly there's still a long way to go in terms of our own behaviour. But this is very much a Scottish issue, clearly. But it's also a global issue. And if we have any doubt about how important this agenda is, we have to look at the UN's Food and Agriculture Organisation's website and look at some of the jaw-dropping astonishing statistics in terms of human behaviour and the impact we're having on the planet and the whole of the food debate uh, around that. And I just want to quote a couple of statistics. One third of food production in the world for human consumption every year uh, is wasted. That's 1.3 billion tonnes. Global quantitative food losses and waste per year are roughly 30% of cereals, 40 to 50% for root crops, fruits and vegetables, 20% for oil seeds, meat and dairy, plus 35% of the world's fish stocks. Wasted. Wasted. If I remember correctly, nearly a third of the world's fertile land grows food which is wasted. These are startling statistics that as a society across the globe we have to address, but play our part here in Scotland eh, as well. And many of the other agendas that Parliament is dealing with are joined up with this as well, particularly issues such as climate change. We have to recognise we don't tackle climate change. The amount of food that's wasted on fertile land through storms and adverse extreme weather events it will just continue to increase with all the energy and nutrients and soils that are put into all that production all being wasted as well. Likewise, if we have food waste and we put it in landfill, that produces gases which contribute to climate change. So all of these agendas are very tied together. But there are many good organisations in Scotland doing good work just now. And I look at our food banks and I look at the effort now that many food banks, particularly Murray Food Bank, which I'm very familiar with, are putting into developing new projects which link up the issue of food waste with tackling food poverty. And I would ask ministers and the government to look at these opportunities in our own communities of how we can tackle these two big issues at the same time. And many projects are looking for funding that are now coming forward that use food that would normally go to waste to help feed families who are unfortunately too often going without in society. So all of these agendas are very much joined up and I welcome today's debate. I hope we come back to Parliament sometime soon and have a further debate on food waste. I call Finlay Carson to be followed by Graham Day. Thank you, President Officer. I'm delighted to participate in this debate on delivering Scotland's food waste target. As already has been referred to, the Scottish Government have pledged to cut food waste in Scotland by a third by 2025. In order to meet this target, a number of measures around food collection will be necessary, but also an emphasis needs to be placed on the prevention of food waste, and that's where I'll direct my comments today. At the start of the year, the Scottish Government launched the first ever circular economy strategy for Scotland entitled Making Things Last. Waste prevention is a key feature of that strategy, which states the first priority in a more circular economy is to avoid unnecessary waste and use fewer resources in the first instance. The UK Government also stipulated in their publication, Prevention is Better Than Cure, that optimising material inputs and reducing wastage through design has to be the starting point of a resource-efficient economy. 
It is not enough just to recycle waste. Action is also needed to prevent the waste from being created in the first place. One of the ways of encouraging waste prevention is through education. And one campaign does that very well, the Love Food Hate Waste campaign. Their success can be attributed to the selection of handy tips and hints on anything from portion sizes to storing food, as well as their innovative recipe ideas, which help individuals, businesses and organisations to reduce their food waste. With this advice, people will get the most out of the food they buy, and at the same time as saving money, they will also eat healthier. In Zero Waste Scotland's report, how much food and drink waste is there in Scotland, we're presented with some quite disturbing figures. It claims that in 2014, 60% of household food waste was classed as avoidable, meaning that food with a price tag of over £1 billion a year, an average of £460 per household, was put in the bin. Presiding officer, it is because of these fig figures like these that we need to do more. Everyone from individuals to business have a role to play in addressing the challenge of food waste prevention, and it is imperative that the government continues their efforts and uses the resources at their disposal to promote good practice and invest in educating people on how to prevent and reduce food waste. It's joined up thinking and working together that will result in targets being met and ultimately a reduction in the amount of food being wasted. We could learn some lessons from the Courtauld Commitment 2025, which has brought together organisations from across the food sector to cut the resources needed to provide our food and drink by one-fifth over 10 years, and has currently got over 120 signatories, ranging from supermarkets and trade associations to government departments and local authorities. Mark Ruskell. But would you not recognise, though, that, that that initiative has yet to report and that the early targets are extremely disappointing? Only 3% in the initial phases. Finlay Carson. I, I think there's no doubt there, there's uh, more to be done. And, but it's something that the government can do is encourage uh, um, increased import performance here. And I've no doubt that supermarkets and these associations will do everything they can to, to reach these targets. Ahead of the debate today, I contacted a number of supermarkets to find out what they are doing to prevent food waste and I've been press, impressed with some of the initiatives. Members will be pleased to learn that a number of supermarkets do not send any food waste to landfill. Instead, they send any surplus food still fit for human consumption to their charity partners, such as Fair Share. Last year in Scotland, one supermarket donated the equivalent of 345,000 meals to more than 370 good causes across the country. In addition, some supermarkets make our wonky vegetables not go to waste either. Instead, these vegetables are used in other products, like ready meals are sold for less uh, in their wonky veg boxes. I also want to mention the Waste Less, Save More campaign, which one supermarket is investing £10 million over 10 years. And this programme is aimed at reducing customer food waste and saving them money. Initiatives being trialled as part of this programme include giving out fridge magnets, setting up community fridges, and rolling out a programme of school engagement which is a very important part indeed. Supermarkets are crucial to the aim of reducing food waste and it's good that they are working with bodies such as NFU, BRC and AHDB on a project to reduce food surplus and food waste linked to primary production of fresh produce. Furthermore, Tesco, Sainsbury's, Asda, Morrison's, close the co-op supermarkets Mr. have all ambitious plans to cut landfill from 6% to 1% in 2020. As I've already said, presiding officer, at the heart of preventing food waste is education. And if we deal with the problem from the outset, the benefits will be much greater than simply meeting targets. The last of the open speeches, Mr Day. A strict four minutes, please, Mr Day. Thank you, presiding officer. Let me begin by reflecting on a positive already mentioned by others in relation to this subject. Household food waste in Scotland has decreased by an estimated 37,000 tonnes per year, or 5.7 per cent overall since 2009. However, context is everything, and in 2013, across the domestic and the commercial and industrial sector, Scotland generated a staggering 1.35 million tonnes of food and drink waste, 600,000 tonnes of that from households alone, which means that if we are to hit the Scottish Government target of a one-third reduction by 2025, then we need to be achieving a 445,000 tonnes annual reduction quite a leap, but there is certainly no lack of incentive from an environmental and financial perspective, let alone the moral perspective. Nor is rising to the uh, challenge, despite its scale, beyond us. Avoidable waste, and 60 per cent of household food waste is reckoned to be in that category, generates more than 2 per cent of Scotland's entire 
carbon footprint. The value of what was thrown away, as others have noted, was in excess of £1 billion, or £460 pounds per household. Simply better managing the journey of that food from purchase through our homes would be enough to ensure we avoided throwing out an estimated 12 per cent of all food purchased. As with so many uh, things climate change related, the route of tackling this issue, certainly from the domestic perspective, is bringing about behavioural change. And from the perspective of prompting that, I'm struck by research commissioned by Sainsbury's that it identified six types of shoppers. Hungry hoarders shop while hungry, resulting in impulse purchases. They often fail to plan ahead, meaning their shop might not create complete meals. Ditsy diarists um, do not consult their little black books before the, their trip to the supermarket. And as they eat out a lot or work away, much of what they buy sits unused in the fridge and is eventually thrown away. Food phobics and are ultra conscious and throw away food on or before the best before date without first checking its condition. Separate shoppers are a generation of independent individuals who buy their own food without checking what their partners or housemate has already bought, often resulting in duplication. Freezer geezers simply love their leftovers and use their freezers effectively to minimise food waste. And finally, conscientious consumers who love to make le meals out of leftovers. President Officer, I will leave it to yourself, the Cabinet Secretary and other members to consider which of these categories they might fall into. I'm pleased, pleased to say I'm a freezer geezer. I won't say who amongst my family is a bit of a ditzy diarist, but a clean out of our admittedly large family fridge last Sunday resulted in the food carry being filled twice over with items which had passed their sell-by date by somewhere between two to four weeks. Like so many in the chamber, I suspect I live in a household that could be doing more and we can all become freezer geezers or conscientious consumers, but better still, we could reduce the need for that by more efficiently planning our shopping in the first place. And having mentioned that piece of work commissioned by Sainsbury's, let me conclude by noting some of the sensible and welcome measures being taken by that particular retailer to play their part in reducing food waste. They are, amongst other things, increasingly sourcing directly from producers so that items such as citrus fruits and salad reach the store more quickly and have a longer shelf life increasing the amount of meat and fish that's vacuum packed and utilising so-called wonky veg in their basics range for, or apple juice or, or for ready-made mashed potatoes. Simple, practical measures that can and hopefully will make a difference as Scotland seeks to hit a target that, for so many reasons, must be hit. Presiding officer. Thank you, Mr Day. Up to five minutes, please, Mr Stewart. This is the closing speeches. Uh, thank you, President Officer. This has been an important and insightful debate with, I believe, well-informed contributions from across the Chamber. But I thought it is ironic as the festive season uh, beckons. It's an almost Dickinesque record that in 2014, according to Unilever, 4.2 million Christmas dinners were wasted in the UK, whilst the poor faced food inequality and ill health. And in that very same year, Scottish households generate an estimated 600,000 tonnes of food waste. And RAP, the Waste and Resource Action Programme, estimated that around 270,000 tonnes of food from the food and drink industry could be redistributed to feed people every year. That is enough for a staggering 650 million meals for people in need. So tackling the vast scale of wasted food in our country is an economic, environmental and moral imperative. Economic because just a 5.7% reduction in household waste between 2009 and 14 saved £92 million. Environmental, because food and drink production make up about 20% of our carbon footprint. And moral, because so many countries around the world are reporting widespread starvation, and many living in our own country are struggling to afford to eat. So surely now, presiding officer, it's time for a step change in Scotland's food system. Across the, the world, as we've heard, about a third of food is wasted. If this was reduced by only a quarter, there would be enough to feed everyone on the planet. So in order to make headway, as we've heard from all the other speakers today, we, in terms of reducing food waste, there needs to be a transformational change in terms of food production. To summarise some of the key points of the debate, we need individuals changing attitude to food use. We need large supermarkets donating unsold food. We need large supermarkets sending zero waste to landfill, like Sainsbury's. We need to cut down on food waste along the supply chain, and, as Elaine Smith has said, 
we need to develop community and co-op initiatives like local compounding schemes, and I would refer members to my register of interest as a co-op party member. And we need to develop, as we've heard from across the chamber, new technology like smart fridge technology and food rescue apps. So I believe that the mantra uh, of reduce, reuse and recycle is vital in protecting our environment and our population from the challenges brought by food waste. One organisation in my region of the Highlands and Islands is the La Habra Environmental Group, who are working hard to raise awareness and educate people about ways they can help reduce the amount of food waste through sessions in schools, home visits and fully interactive cooking demonstrations. And my Westminster Labour colleague, uh, Kerry McCarthy MP, has introduced a food waste reduction bill in the Commons through which she's hoping to use stricter guidelines to cut waste in the supply chain. And her objective is to encourage redistribution of leftover food to charities to help people uh, living in food uh, poverty. In the brief time I've got available, President Officer, I haven't time to mention everyone, but I do believe this has been an excellent debate. I can't uh, resist mentioning Mr Chapman, um, whose interesting comments about if it looks good in his house, he eats it. And through you, presiding officer, please don't invite me to your Christmas dinner on the 25th. I'm very sorry about that. I also thought there was extremely good contributions from Gillian Martin. And Edward Mountain had a very quotable quote about he doesn't farm rubbish and he's not a rubbish farmer, which I'm sure was prefabricated. But nevertheless, an extremely good line. And he made some interesting costs about the rural costs, which I can relate to as a Highlands Islands member. And Angus MacDonald, I think, made some interesting scientific points about the damaging nature of methane, which is easy uh, to forget. And I would endorse the comments Elaine Smith made uh, about the issue of co-ops. Uh, Mike Ruskell has always had a very thoughtful uh, interventions and contributions. Uh, and although my friend Lee MacArthur is not supporting um, the uh, Labour amendment on this occasion, uh, in the spirit of Christmas, I always believe that sinners should have the chance to repent. And I hope that next Christmas he will support the Labour amendment. And I endorse, endorse the comments uh, made by Richard uh, Lockhead, Finn Carson uh, and Graham Day, who is now a freezer geezer. Uh, in conclusion, beside officer, and conscious of time, um, as we approach the dawn of the new year, uh, we reach the sunset of the old, a year of stunning scientific achievements. We've seen SpaceX successfully land a rocket vertically, crucial for the future of our manned space exploration. We've been seen new research into stem cells, which means that disabled stroke patients can walk again. And perhaps more bizarrely but interesting, uh, Chinese scientists have discovered by the adding a one atom link of graphene to solar panels, you can generate electricity uh, from raindrops. But yet today, at this very moment in Scotland, we have an inequitable society where the impoverished cannot afford to eat good food, while the affluent relegate food to the bin without a blush. And the words of the former Secretary General of the UN, Ban Ki-moon, in a world of plenty, no one, not a single person, should go hungry. Thank you. I now call Maurice Golden up to six minutes, please, Mr Golden. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I refer members to the entry in my register of members' interests with regard to Zero Waste Scotland, as well as being a Chartered Institute of Waste Manager accredited Waste Smart Trainer. I think reflecting on the debate this afternoon, it's positive to see there's agreement over the direction of travel with respect to food waste. I thought uh, Gillian Martin did a sterling job focusing on collections as well as processing and highlighting the Good To Go doggy bag campaign. Edward Mountain highlighted a lack of food waste collections in rural areas and the cost associated with this and Liam MacArthur followed that up with respect to Orkney and looking at potential uh, solutions for that island community. Perhaps commercial feasibility into uh, an anaerobic digestion plant on Orkney would be one such solution and I'd certainly urge the Cabinet Secretary to publish any information uh, that she has available with respect to that. Mark Ruskell and Elaine Smith spoke about food justice with respect to food waste and Mark followed this up with a, a point around uh, a substantive point around uh, managing food waste throughout the supply chain. Whole food purchasing of, of, of fields was also mentioned by Mark as well as uh, Peter Chapman. And uh, reflecting overall we are supportive of the government motion today. 
uh, recognising the ambitious target, but also felt that reference to innovation and the circular economy must be made, hence the reason uh, for our uh, amendment. Over the course of um, uh, the next four and a half minutes, I will explain why innovation is so important by focusing on food waste prevention for consumers and businesses. Uh, but before that, we require information on how we measure as well as, we, as how we incentivise uh, food waste uh, prevention, especially given that there is a perverse incentive at local authority level to re recycle rather than prevent waste. I also have sympathy with the Labour Amendment and an assessment of 100% recycling rate uh, by 2020. Although I agree with the Cabinet Secretary's uh, 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 intervention point that it probably would have been best to term it as a, a recovery rate rather than a recycling rate because generally um, uh, according to the Chartered Institute of Waste Management you wouldn't have uh, recycling uh, with respect to food waste within the waste hierarchy. It generally goes prevention, recovery uh, down to disposal and I, I've got a slide on that as well. Um, yes, so um, uh, but I, I certainly fear that enough, not enough progress has been made with respect to the 2021 target and therefore an assessment at this stage of uh, how food waste targets will be met uh, would very much be welcomed. Furthermore, uh, food poverty is also important to highlight with the average household able to save £460 per year by throwing less food away, a point eloquently made by Angus Macdonald. Food waste prevention has so many benefits. It is a win for consumers and businesses by saving money, but it is also a win for the environment, as every time food is wasted, the water, energy, time, labour, land, fertiliser, fuel, packaging, put into growing, preparing, storing, transporting, cooking, the food is entirely wasted. The carbon impact of a punnet of strawberries is around three kilograms, and globally, if food waste was a country, it would be the world's third largest emitter of carbon dioxide. On average, preventing one tonne of food waste avoids over four tonnes of CO2 equivalent. Love Food Hate Waste campaign is so important in helping uh, to support and provide advice on how consumers can plan, portion and store food in order to prevent waste, a point well made by my colleague Finlay Carson. <laughs> That's why it's so worrying how the Scottish Government have cut funding for this particular campaign. I do recognise the work of the Love Food Hate Waste champions throughout Scotland and Zero Waste East Dumbartonshire is one such of those community groups worthy of a mention. Uh, Claudia Beamish also men mentioned the benefits of orchards and using uh, waste apples to create uh, apple juice as well as creating positive mental health outcomes. Richard Lockhead explained that he couldn't live without his food waste caddy in a passionate speech about his efforts to tackle food waste. And Graham Day confessed he was a freezer geezer uh, and wanted to encourage conscientious consumers, although did admit there was a ditzy diner in his household. Now, I have been trialling a Winnows technology um, at home, which is a set of electronic scales connected to an app which logs all household food waste over a period of four weeks, then calculates how much was being thrown and at what cost. This is a, a great way to review how you can uh, reduce your uh, food waste overall. We also need to look at uh, businesses and how we encourage businesses uh, to prevent uh, food waste as well as develop innovation, innovative solutions uh, for processing. Uh, Reclassification of aerobic on-site biodigesters uh, would be one such way in which we could help businesses, particularly in rural areas. In conclusion, we need to develop innovative solutions to reduce food waste for the benefit of the environment, businesses and consumers, all as part of our journey towards a circular economy. I now call on Rosanna Cunningham to close the debate. Eight minutes, please, Cabinet Thank Secretary. you very much, Presiding Officer. Um, this is the kind of debate I think that probably makes us all feel very guilty. Um, my declaration of interest, yes, like everyone else, I frequently fail to match purchase to consumption. I probably take all of the above box on Graham Day's list, although he didn't mention that. Um, on the plus side, I do grow some of my own food in my freezers, plural, are stuffed with frozen green beans and 
courgettes and I've bottled tomatoes in the pantry. On the downside, there are more apples lying on the ground in my garden than I will ever be able to use, and they will literally be for the birds. Um, could I close today's debate by mentioning some things that haven't been raised in the debate, but I feel it's worth talking about, and Maurice Golden just referred in passing uh, at the end. Um, and I, I think that I, I really need to say something about the opportunities for business to make the most of the uh, biological resources flowing through our economy. It's a subject we've not really touched on today, uh, but is worth a mention, because the bioeconomy is one of our four priority sectors where we can make the biggest environmental and economic impact. Food waste is a significant source of carbon emissions, and a more circular approach to the beer, whiskey, fish sectors could lead to potential savings of half a billion pounds per year. So there's a huge opportunity uh, there. While our primary focus is on reducing waste, we want an increasing proportion of biological wastes to be used for production of high value materials and chemicals, maximizing environmental and economic benefits and replacing non-renewable chemical feedstocks. And I think some of that was referred to perhaps by Peter Chapman. I'm maybe wrong. Uh, sorry, <laughs> it's at the front here. In February, the First Minister announced £70 million of European and Scottish Government money to deliver our circular economy ambitions and our manufacturing action plan. So some of the actions that will relate to food waste will be uh, in those uh, 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 other um, uh, areas as well. And a key element of that is our Circular Economy Investment Fund. In October, uh, Paul Wheelhouse announced £1.5 million of funding for a bioeconomy accelerator programme to support innovative projects in partnership with the Scottish Industrial Biotechnology Innovation Centre and which will maximise collaboration between business and research. And I think this you know, speaks to uh, the Conservative Amendment uh, in terms of, of, of innovation. Uh, Scottish Enterprise and Zero Waste Scotland uh, have already provided funding and support uh, to successful companies like Cellucomp, who turned vegetable waste into a cellulose-based product, which has a number of applications for paint and coatings. And they've also supported Celtic Renewables, who are turning, that probably should be Celtic Renewables, who are turning whisky uh, waste into biofuel, which is a direct replacement for fossil road fuel and other valuable chemicals. And those of you who will follow me on social media uh, may know that I've been nurturing my own circular economy project, um, virtue of uh, Aurora Sustainability, who are really helping uh, to explore circular economy models uh, in, in, uh, in their case, and that meant in my case, growing mushrooms on my kitchen windowsill uh, using waste coffee grounds as the medium uh, on which to grow them. But the amount of waste coffee grounds that is chucked out every day in Scotland, one can imagine, if you can find a solution to their use, would be uh, extraordinary. Now, we've had a, a number of examples of good practice from across the chamber today. Um, Peter Chapman raised a number of issues, but uh, how to support more remote local authorities. And yes, I do, that is an issue, and it was raised also by uh, Liam MacArthur. It, to, to a certain extent, it's why there's currently a rural derogation, of course, uh, um, but that derogation is currently postcode based, which means urban areas are being captured uh, uh, unnecessarily. That's why we're going to have a look at it again. Uh, but he does also rightly point out that there are consumer behaviour issues involved here as well. Um, he will nevertheless be pleased to know that I will be accepting the Conservative Amendment. It speaks of the necessity of innovation. Much of that is already happening and we will need to look for more progress there. Oh, and just in passing, we've given £25 million to Council since 2013 for food waste recycling. So they have had money for us uh, on this very particular issue. And on the bigger question of zero waste uh, uh, in the draft budget, uh, the budget for zero waste is exactly the same between 2016 and 17 and 2017 and 18 at 20.5 million. There isn't a cut. What there was uh, in 2016-17 was an extra £3 million given in year uh, in order to, uh, for them to do particular things in relation to climate change uh, and other projects. Claudia Beamish spoke to her amendment, as did uh, David Stewart, obviously. However, as I indicated earlier, I have clear and explicit advice from Zero Waste Scotland that the target she proposes is unachievable. For the avoidance of doubt, having been given such clear advice, I can't accept that Labour amendment. And I do regret that because I know she will have brought this to the Chamber with the very best of intentions. And I hope to be able to have further conversations with her on this subject. So we may find more to agree on uh, than to disagree. Gillian Martin, Angus MacDonald talked about local examples of good practice. And I was interested to hear of Finlay Carson's conversations with local retailers. What he reports is heartening. 
Edward Mountain talked about treating the Highlands differently. Yes, of course. Uh, but again, he talked about food recycling, which, uh, as has been indicated, isn't actually part of our target. Uh, in any case, the rural derogation does take into account the difficulties faced in rural areas, as I've already discussed. And to a certain extent, it highlights a problem likely to be posed by any 100% target uh, that is attempted to be uh, 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 gone after. Elaine Smith, I think, very rightly talked about the shame of wasting food, waste, uh, f wasting food in our world when so many have so little. And it does strike me that our grandparents and great-grandparents would be bewildered by this debate. I doubt they wasted so much as a crumb. Mark Rusko uh, talked about where most food waste comes from. Uh, actually, household is the single largest contributor, uh, followed by manufacturing. And the various other sectors come a good deal further down the list on that. And uh, uh, just Mark Ruskell. Uh, sorry, Mr. Ruskell, your microphone. That's you now. Thank you very much. Um, can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for giving way, but what specific action will the Scottish Government be taking to strengthen the grocery code? Because as you know, there's nobody here to speak up for farmers in this chamber. Uh, before you start, Cabinet Secretary, could I ask people to please have a bit of consideration and stop having conversations, especially quite close to the Cabinet Secretary? Thank you. Oh. <laughs> well, as Mark Ruskell knows Ms. from Cunningham. what I've said in the, in, uh, during the debate, there are a number of actions that are going, a number of conversations, a number of uh, initiatives that are being undertaken. Uh, and it is the case that we have to go through every single layer uh, of, uh, uh, of the, the food uh, waste journey in order to achieve uh, um, the, uh, uh, what we want to achieve. But as I understand it, uh, supermarkets only account for 2% of food waste. So some of the much bigger uh, uh, targets uh, that we need to achieve are not so much about the supermarkets that are uh, uh, across manufacturing, um, uh, etc. Um, Liam MacArthur, I think, uh, raised some of the same general issues as uh, uh, Peter Chapman uh, and perhaps uh, Edward Mountain, and I think uh, we all recognise that. The scale of that challenge uh, does demonstrate how difficult this is going to be, and uh, so we do have to think very carefully about how we're going to manage it. Richard Lockhead, could I pay tribute to my predecessor, Richard, uh, in this uh, policy area? We are where we are now because of actions he took over a number of years. Indeed, the food waste target was announced by him in February uh, this year. Uh, so I want, to, uh, I want to pay tribute to all of that work he has done. I'm going to take everything raised by members today and consider the points further as we put together a package of action to deliver our food waste target. We've launched a series of stakeholder workshops to discuss options to achieve the target, emphasising that all sectors need to work together, including on-farm, uh, uh, all along the supply chain. The next step will be a formal consultation in 2017 on a set of actions to meet that target, which could include legislative measures for inclusion in the Good Food Nation Bill. However, I do want to remind everyone that the 33% target on food waste prevention does not include food waste recycling. And I think it's very easy in the debate we've had today uh, and in the discussions that we may have after this debate to conflate those two things. Um, we are not treating them as the same. We are talking specifically about food waste prevention when we talk about the, uh, uh, the target of 33% by 2025. We are specifically not talking about recycling in terms of that. So, you know, it, it, it can be a little bit difficult to get your head around, but in actual fact, we just need to remember that. Um, our food waste target, presiding officer, is one of the most ambitious in the world. It is a testing target. Our circular economy strategy is about keeping valuable products, including food, in high value use for as long as possible in Scotland, a good food nation. It is about making things last. And as a number of people have inferred and implied throughout this debate, now we need to make things happen. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our debate on delivering Scotland's food waste target. The next item of business is consideration of motion 3099 on the appointment of Scottish Land Commissioners and the Tenant Farming Commissioner. I would ask Rosanna Cunningham to move the motion. Moved. And then, thank you. The question on this motion will be put at decision time. The next item of business is consideration of business motion 3167 
in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out a revised business programme. I would ask any member who wishes to speak against the motion to press their request to speak buttons. I would ask Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion 3167. Moved. Thank you. And no member has asked to speak against the motion. I will now put the question to the Chamber. The question is that motion number 3167 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are all agreed. And just before we come to decision time, at the conclusion of First Minister's questions, uh, a point of order was raised by Patrick Harvey, MSP, and Mr Harvey asked me to look into the declaration of an interest in proceedings and to consider whether the Code of Conduct had been complied with. And having done so, I can uh, advise the Chamber that it is the responsibility of each member to uh, judge whether a declarable interest is sufficiently relevant to particular proceedings to require a declaration, and members are advised to err on the side of caution. Uh, I can also advise the Chamber that the member in question uh, this afternoon uh, contacted me immediately after FMQs to apologise for an inadvertent oversight. Now we move to decision time. There are four questions to be put as a result of today's business. The first question is that Amendment 3102.1 in the name of Peter Chapman, which seeks to amend Motion 3102 in the name of Rosanna Cunningham on delivering Scotland's food waste target, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are all agreed. The next question is that Amendment 3102.2 in the name of Claudia Beamish, which seeks to amend motion in the name of Rosanna Cunningham, be agreed. Are we all agreed? No. We're not agreed. We'll move to our division and members may cast their votes now. The result of the vote on the amendment in the name of Claudia Beamish is yes 47, no 65. There were five abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. Uh, the next question is that amendment 3102 in the name of Rosanna Cunningham as amended on delivering Scotland's food waste target be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are all agreed. And the Final question. Actually, no. Sorry, the next question. Yes, there is a final one as well. But there's also we do have to move the business motion as well. As already made it, okay. Yes. So this one. Uh, the final question is that motion 3099 in the name of Rosanna Cunningham on appointment of Scottish land commissioners and the tenant farming commissioner be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. That concludes decision time, and I close this meeting of Parliament.